easy. Goodbye. And to wish you a very happy marriage. I'm not getting married. I'm afraid you are. The lady has already arrived. And O'Gareth is here to fetch you. Goodbye. To the devil with you. And O'Gareth. And the Empress with you. For am I a child to be fetched and married and ordered about by a parcel of women? Heir to the throne. Heir to a baby's rattle and a box of toys. Get out. Out of here, all of you, go on. Get out. Out of you, out of here. Didn't you hear me, Arthur? You need one friend. Friend. I I I'm sorry, Gregory. But it's, it's these women. The Empress treating me like a half-witted child. Sending to fetch me home to marry some, some girl that's... Since you must marry sometime or other, wouldn't it be wiser to face it and get it over? Well, I loathe the whole idea of marriage. Watched on. Spied on. Peter, you must learn to control yourself. I'm almost telling you. Remember that one day you will rule Russia. Russia. Does it take such a fine character to rule Russia? Look at my aunt. The Empress. If she weren't on the throne, she'd be on the streets. Russia knows it and Russia loves it. To so the most shameless rake that ever wore a petticoat. Elizabeth, Empress of all the Russias. Her Imperial Majesty Elizabeth, Empress of all the Russias. That's all right, ladies. So you've been trying to upset my plans again, Bestuja. I brought this girl all the way from Germany, and the marriage will take place whether you like it or not. But when I think your majesty is wrong... Shut up! You have no business to think I'm wrong. I'm not wrong!
wish to resign Your Majesty's service. Fiddlesticks! <laughs> Be married in three months. The girl has to change her religion, of course. And she must have a new name. Let's see. Alexandra. Alexandra? Why not Alexandra? Such a great name for a slip of a girl. Call her Alexandra if you like. I prefer Catherine. All right. You see how reasonable I am? Let the little one be called Catherine. Couldn't we stop for a moment? The Empress and the Grand Duke are waiting for us. Yes, I know. But Russia just takes my breath away. The country's so vast. The corridors and the palace are so endless. I have the feeling we lived in a hut in Germany. We lived at the castle in Stettin, Lieutenant Olaf. Pull yourself together, please. And don't forget the deep curtsy before the Empress. Yes. She might then give you her hand to kiss, or she might embrace and kiss you. Kiss me. But how shall I know which is the Grand Duke? He will stand at the Empress's right. Yes, sir. Is he as tall as you? Taller, Your Highness. Taller? Shall I just shake hands with him? He might kiss your hand. Let him kiss your hand. Yes. Don't ask any more questions. Now, hold yourself up. Shoulders back. Look at me. Now. Why aren't you in full dress? To meet a couple of country cousins. To meet the girl you're going to marry. But I'm not. The throne must have an heir. The throne has an heir. Yes, but you won't live forever. And if you don't marry and have a son, I must. Please do. Which of your lovers do you propose to make an honest man? Hold your tongue and do as you're told. I won't. You'll marry the princess and her zest. I'm off. You'll stay where you are. I won't marry her and you can do whatever you like about it. Peter! What is it? I think I'd better inquire, madam. Her Majesty has fainted, and uh, His Highness has retired to his apartment. I'll, uh, I'll try to find out what has happened. Excuse me. It's all over. We can pack our bags. Why? The Grand Duke doesn't want you. Why? I don't know. Perhaps you're not good looking enough. Oh, but Mother, he has not even seen me. Mr. Chef! Go to the Grand Duke and tell him he either marries the Princess and her Zerbst at once or he thinks it over in a fortress. In six months' time, I will ask him again. I'll see the Empress. This marriage is her idea. She must bring this young man to reason. Oh, no, Mother, you won't do that. You can't force him to marry me. Oh, no, please, let's go home. Let's go home immediately. I'll, I'll save you, Mother. Yes. Madam, Mother, please. I won't stay, Mother. Officer, officer. Please show me the way out. Out where? Out. Out of the palace. Out of the town. Out of the whole barbarian country. What's happened? He insulted me. Who? He's lying to pieces. Oh, that fellow? 
You know him? Oh, yes, I know him. Oh, then perhaps you know why he refuses to marry me. Why he refuses even to see me? Well... Well, perhaps they suggested some other German princesses to him. Maybe... maybe he prefers one of them. Which one? Well, there's the uh, Mecklenburg princess. Oh, that's impossible. Why? Because she has a cavalry moustache and rabbit's teeth. <laughs> well, then there's the, uh, there's the Oldenburg princess. Which one? Which one? There are four. Four old maids. I know them all. I tell you, I'm far the best. And far the prettiest, too. And the most ambitious as well. So you want to be empress? So you want to govern Russia? Nonsense. I don't care about becoming an empress. I don't care about governing Russia. I only care for the Grand Duke. Why should you care about the Grand Duke? You don't even know him. Why? I've been told about him ever since I was born. Since I was ten, I've always been told I was to be his wife. I've thought about him. I've dreamed about him. Now I love him. Now he refuses me. Well, if all you've lost is the Grand Duke, I should call it a lucky escape. Are you his friend? I? His worst enemy. What have you got against him? Everything. He's a bad friend, dangerous enemy. He's cruel, suspicious, disloyal, vain. He mistrusts everyone including himself. In a word, the man's not a gentleman. How dare you say such a thing about His Highness? I think you forget who I am. I am the Princess of Anhalt-Zerbst. Oh. Oh, Your Highness. Kindly show me the way out, immediately. Didn't I come from here? Well, oh, this is quite right, Your Highness. Nothing but stairs and corridors and more stairs. Oh, but... Are you sure that's the way out? Oh, yes, Your Highness. It's the best way out for both of us. I just some husband or other. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? Aunt Elizabeth, what was the date you fixed for our wedding? last few years. How many dresses have I got? Five thousand, Your Majesty. All of them magnificent. Magnificent? <laughs> what more can Paris do? Invent a dress that makes a woman look 20 years younger. Don't look at me with that sour face, Beth Trushev. But why don't you say something gay? Whatever I say in these last few weeks seems to annoy your majesty. Uh -huh. Go to the church and wait for me, Bestusha. Insupportable. I'll send him to Siberia. Shuvalov. How's that, Shuvalov? Your Majesty looks like the bride. 
No, Shuvala. But I feel like the bride. Who said this rock was bad? Oh, it's charming. Charming, madam. Think this needs to be a little short. Yes, your majesty. Please, 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 how do I look? Ah. Perfection, Your Highness. Good. Congratulations to both of you. Come on. Both. Hmm. Yourself and the princess. She hooked me and landed me, and you're dishing me up with all the trimmings. Huh? <laughs> and this is so Your Highness has found a very clever wife. Possibly. <laughs> she caught me quite by accident. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she didn't know me from Adam. Perhaps she had a whisper from Eve. Meaning what? Well, as Your Highness knows, women have a je ne sais quoi uh, instinct. <laughs> huh? No. 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 Did she, though? Did she know all the time? Oh, mon Dieu, Your Highness, such an idea never entered my head. No, but it entered hers. What was it she said? I... I don't care about governing Russia. All I care about is the Grand Duke. Dirty little cheat. You think that's clever, do you? No, no, no. Yes, you do. You just said so. I'll show you if it's clever or not. I'll teach her to trap me. What will the Grand Duke wear? The uniform of his regiment. Oh, he'll look wonderful. So strong and slender. I look so little at his side. Can't you do something to make me look a little taller? Perhaps this will help. Oh, yes, the shoes. Of course you can't change my face. Slow dignity. Well met. I've just been thinking about you. You flatter me. What are you doing here? I just wanted to see you happily married. I hear she's very clever. Oh, yes. Very clever. When can I see you alone? What would you do if I said tonight? I'd say 12 o'clock at the hunting lodge. Tonight? You wouldn't dare. Her Highness, the Princess of Anhalt Zerps. See you at 12 o'clock. Her Imperial Majesty, Elizabeth, Empress of all the Russias. Yes, I do. Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? Yes, I do. Until death us do part. 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 Tell Sergei to have the 
Let's lay in the courtyard in about mm, 20 minutes, will you? Tonight, Your Highness? Mm, tonight. At what time may I expect Your Highness to return? Tomorrow, probably. I'm taking you with me. But this is your wedding night, Your Highness. For a Frenchman, you have some very old-fashioned ideas, Lecoq. Were you ever married? Not officially, Your Highness, but I have... Uh, I have dabbled in it. <laughs> dabbled in it. Are you order the slave. I am sorry. Her Majesty cannot see you tonight. She has affairs to talk over with her new uh, aide de camp. Shuvalov. Shuvalov. Hey ho. <sighs> It's always a mistake for a woman to tell a man that she loves him. That depends on the man. Wouldn't any man take advantage of it? I shouldn't. Wouldn't you? What did it get you, Shinka? What's wrong with you tonight? With me, nothing. But her highness, she, she's crying her eyes out all alone. Alone? You mean to say he's left her? He hasn't been with her. The hunting lodge, I think. But she, she's crying her eyes out. So that it hurts to listen. The swine! Brooch! like that to me. Do you? I'm responsible for you. I won't tolerate your being treated like this just because you're young and helpless. But that's just the way men do treat women. The devils if they think they can get away with it. But Peter can't. And so he'll find them. I have to drag him back by the scruff of his neck. No, 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 no. There's only one way for a poor defenseless woman to treat her husband, and that's to get the upper hand of him in the first five minutes. And to rule him. I don't want to rule him. And if he does love, we can live together as friends. Friends? <laughs> Never. Without love, marriage is simply immoral. The whole aim and sense of it is to have a man here, under your thumb. Oh, Lord, if we could only live without men. But we can't live without them, the rascals. And how difficult it is to live with them. Especially with yours. He's unstable, moody, dangerous and bad. Well... It's easy to love the good ones. Everybody loves them, but one must love the others, because they need our love. Don't you see he needs it? Oh, you love him? Yes, I do. That's entirely different. It's a terribly difficult case. Nobody can help you, nobody can advise you. And then you'll have to help yourself, my little Catherine.
so. Anniversary of the Battle of Poltava. Full dress parade of the officers for your wife's inspection. Full dress parade of my wife's lovers. For my inspection. That's what it was done for. Aren't you proud of them, Colonel? Perhaps, on the whole. Not quite the stuff we were made of in my young day. Oh, but you can't expect that. Your record goes back to the Battle of Poltava, where you were the first man through the Swedish line and got that. And that. And that. How do you know all this? This is my regiment, Colonel. Gentlemen, I invite you to come in and drink your regimental toast with me. Fred, this miss. Stop to that little mountain bank. Gentlemen, the toast is the most glorious regiment in the world. Your regiment, my regiment, the Ismailovsky regiment, coupled with the name of Colonel Karnilov. Colonel Karnilov. Now, gentlemen. Whose turn is it to be my the colonel this month? My, my turn. Oh, no, 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 you nourish kid. You are far too busy with your military pursuits. Pursuits, right? Yes. The pursuit of the girl in the flower shop, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> Teaching her the use of half size of toast. And practicing falling in. <laughs> Peter, what a charming surprise. Won't you join us? I want to talk to you. Very well. I shall be free about four o'clock. You're coming now. Right. When I've said goodbye to my guests. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'm sorry to leave you. Bye, Kuczynski. Bye, gentlemen. Bye. Bye, Lariski. Oh, but you are taking me to the opera tonight. Please don't forget. You are hurting me. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Why? Your behavior, it's a scandal. I don't know what you are talking about. About your lovers. Oh, my lovers? Yes, your lovers. There must have had half a dozen in one regiment. Half a dozen? Well, I dare say a dozen. Oh, to be exact, 17. 17? Yes. You gave this woman a regiment. Do you know what she does with it? She's just flung it in my face that she's had 17 lovers in two years. 70? No, 17. But I don't know what it's all about. Haven't I complied with his wishes? Haven't I lived for two years apart from him? Quietly, discreetly. I don't know why he makes such a terrible fuss now. There's a lot of shamelessness even at this court. I demand that you send her back where she came from. You demand? Well, if you don't, I'll take the law into my own hands. That will do, Peter. Wait here for my decision. Catherine? How many did you say? Seventeen. Seventeen. Are you sure? Not eighteen or nineteen? No, seventeen. 
Who was the first? I can't remember now. But you remember the last? Yes. Marishkin. No, uh, I mean... Alexei Baradin. Oh. <laughs> Tell a man as many lies as you like, but never try to lie to a woman in matters of love. You haven't had one lover yet, Miss Catherine. <laughs> You've got nothing to be ashamed of. The method was right. Every beast of a man begins to want you when he thinks you belong to some other beast of a man. But you've overdone it. It isn't easy for any man to overlook 17 lovers. Well, my devourer of lovers. And all that because you're still in love with that crazy husband of yours. But why? Maybe you'll succeed. I shall. Didn't you see how furious he was? He's jealous. That's good. But it's not enough. You can't live with 17 imaginary lovers. What you need is one real one. We'll soon settle this. Come. Peter. You want to divorce your wife? I do. Right. And you want to divorce your husband? Yes, I do. Right. We'll choose another wife for you, the Mecklenburg girl or the Oldenburg woman. Right? Right. And you will go back to your mother, right? Right. I'll settle the matter as soon as possible. In the meantime, no scandal. You'll both behave as if nothing had happened. You'll hear my further decisions later. Thank you. Shall we go? Right. You know, I'm beginning to like you now, but I don't have to. I always felt you could be very charming if one man married to you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, well. Uh... Uh, your rooms, you, you, you find them nice and comfortable? Yes, my rooms are charming. Uh, goodbye. Have a good time. Good time? Yes. I saw your carriage waiting. Who is the reason tonight? Anna Talitzi. Oh. The most charming woman in Petersburg. And you? Opera with Baradin. Oh. Most disgusting fellow in Petersburg. Mm. Tastes differ. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, wait. Uh, little Catherine. Um, uh, why not... <laughs> why not dine with me? What a gorgeous idea. <laughs> Look up. Lecoq! Lecoq, send a message to the Princess Halicin. Tell her I can't come along tonight because, because... Well, you always know what to say. <laughs> yes, and another message to Lieutenant Baradine. My deepest regrets. Very well, Your Highness. <laughs> Dinner tonight will be served in the Blue Room. Blue Room? Next to Her Highness's uh, bedroom. Maître Duval. The dinner tonight should be uh, light. Oh, bubbling. Not, oh, not a family affair, but uh, sufficient for the first stages of a... <sighs> you know what I mean. And the wine tokai of a vintage to make up a woman's mind. Pom. To the footman? No, myself alone. There are circumstances that call for a 
Frenchman. No, quite seriously. You ought to marry that Mecklenburg girl. She's really lovely. Honey-colored hair down to her knees and a skin like cream and roses. I thought you told me she had a cavalry mustache. <laughs> no, no. Just a teeny tiny little suspicion of a mustache. Oh, charm. Men adore it, really. <laughs> Um, by the way, who was the first? First what? First lover. Mine? Yes, yours. Nariskin. When was that? Let me see. It was, um, 10th of March. Where? In Petershof. In spring. The trees were all in bud. You were in Moscow with the Italian opera singer. Nariskin taught me to ride. That evening we sat for hours in front of the fire, reading Voltaire. And then? Well, one gets tired of reading. <laughs> and how long did that last? Until May when we went back to Moscow. And in Moscow, you met the second? Mm hmm Who was it? Gagarin. And how long did that last? Mm. Till the court came back to Petersburg. Oh, that's the beginning of June. Mm -hmm. Three weeks. Oh, but in Petersburg, the funniest thing happened. Do you remember the French ambassador's masked ball? No. Oh, darling, when you were in Moscow with Natasha Ronsky. Yes, I remember. Well, there was a harlequin who made passionate love to me the whole evening. And I was convinced that it was Alexei Barajin. Oh, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> well, we escaped together and slipped into the palace. And the next morning I discovered that it was Lanyin <laughs> And he was so terribly in love with me that it took me a week before I could get rid of him and invite Alexei Borodin. You dare to tell me that? You idiot. You idiot, idiot, idiot. Why? Because it's not true. Not true? Not a word. Didn't you have 17 lovers? Not one, you... Well, why didn't you tell me you had? You idiot. Why did you leave me that first night? Because I was an idiot. Why don't you go to the ball? No, I'd rather stay here. I want to work. I don't want you to work. I want you to go to bed. What about Russia? If I go to bed... Oh, I don't leave that to your chancellors and ministers. Uh, oh, darling, you should go to bed. Dr. Maskin said so, please. How is Her Majesty tonight? Worse? Worse than she has any idea of. So Dr. Marsden says. Don't take it away. Read it to me, Catherine. Yes, I will. What is it? It's a report from the Governor of Kiev. The peasants are in revolt. Bad crops. Famine. The governor asks for military reinforcements to suppress the rebellion. What do you think? Shall I send the military? No. Famine cannot be suppressed by bullets. 
One should send flour and corn from other territories, where the crops were good. Hmm. So that's what you think about the peasants' revolt? Yes. When my peasants revolt, I should hang my governors. Good. Very good, little Catherine. Will Your Majesty appear at the ball, or shall we stop it? Her Majesty must go to bed. Where is the Grand Duke? At the ball. The ball must go on. Stay here, Catherine. Deal with these. You think I can? You can very well. Your Highness is looking very happy tonight. So I ought to be with so many friends around me. All perfectly charming. <laughs> All perfectly new. <laughs> Your Highness can scarcely call me a new friend. I can scarcely call you a friend of any kind, my dear Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Only last week you practically ignored my existence. Oh, no, Your Highness. Oh, yes. But last week... Last week, Her Imperial Majesty had not yet been taken seriously ill. I think His Highness has gone. Don't try to lie to me, idiot. Gone just when the weathercocks are beginning to gather around him? How many of them are licking his boots at this moment? Ten, twenty, fifty? There are a few gentlemen around, His Highness. Mm. He feels his as are already, and he thinks I'm already in the grave. The uh, funeral cortege of my lamented aunt will pass through every main street in Petersburg. We'll invite... Uh, we'll invite everybody. I'll go and spoil his love scene. But your majesty must give your heart a rest. <laughs> I've never in my life given my heart a rest. Now I'll wear the uniform of... Um... Let's see, what uniform shall I wear? Her majesty. The dancing fire all this ceremony. Go on, go on, play. Well, Peter, how are you? All right, thanks. You look splendid. It's a wonderful thing to belong to a healthy family. My grandmother, your great-grandmother, lived to be 86. And there's no reason why we shouldn't do the same. I'm sure you will. It's a great blessing for Russia, too. Instead of waiting anxiously for his predecessor's death, the heir to the throne has time to gather experience and to learn... Uh, to learn patience. Patience? <laughs> exactly. It's a wonderful virtue, Peter. Shuvalov, I feel marvelous. I'm going to dance the minuet. To take her throat into my hand and close my fingers. She's laughing at me. Peter, she can hardly stand. She only came here to make me ridiculous. She's very, very ill. She'll outlive me. And you. She'll live a hundred years. Is it very bad, Gregory? Very bad. Good. Guard, open that window. It's cold outside. Why? To clear the way for death. He needs an entrance here. Hi, black one. Oh, 
white one. Whoever you are, this way, in here, welcome. Your Highness, Peter. That's all right, Gregory. <laughs> She'll die. Where is that lunatic? Peter's just been here. He's very anxious for your recovery. He's very anxious that I should die. No. I am dying, Catherine. And I leave Russia. And I leave you in the care of a madman. Oh, no, no. He's not a madman. You should rule Russia. Women can rule and men can't. Is it a sin that I didn't have him killed? No, 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 please don't. He will ruin Russia. No. He will break you. No, please don't, please. Oh. I beg of you. You still love him. Oh. How can a woman fight as long as she's in love? And you must fight. You or he. Kill or be killed. No, no, no. He'll be good and wise. Lecoq! Lecoq! Monsieur Lecoq, the inscrutable will of Providence is about to deprive us of the Empress of Russia, my beloved aunt. My most urgent need, therefore, Monsieur Lecoq, is a man whose character is a little below and whose intelligence is far below the average. A chancellor for the empire? A bullseye, Monsieur Lecoq. He's a madman. I wish you didn't love him. Is it a sin to wish you didn't love him? Or is it a sin I haven't blotted him out and left you to care for Russia? What is a sin? Will God forgive my sins? Will God forgive my sins, little Catherine? Yes, you will, darling. That is why he's God. He created us and gave us our frailties and our sinful thoughts. But he is our Father in heaven, and we are his children. And like a good father, he forgives us everything, our sins and our happiness. As my Chancellor Vorenzoff, you will immediately prepare several decrees for the day of, of my coronation. What is it? Her Majesty may recover. That's right. She may. Thinking, all right. Trust for rats. <laughs> She'll die. New coins, Vorenzov. I don't like my face very much, but I don't want to look at hers anymore. New uniforms for the army. Everyone back from Siberia whom she expelled and everyone to go who had her favor.
from Edith. Waiting for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. But I don't need anything. And I want to be alone. I know. Still, I beg to ask of your majesty to go and see the emperor. Oh, no. No. I can't see anybody now. I just want to be alone. His majesty has just ordered the preparation of several new decrees. Yes, I know. It'll shock public opinion. But I don't want to interfere. Not now, love. He's so suspicious, not yet. Entirely innocent people are to be exiled to Siberia only because they were in favor with the Empress. Oh. Shuvalov, Balkonsky, the whole family, Bastuzhov, Laninsky, father and son, Korakin, wife and daughters and grandsons. Oh, stop! Stop! Quite enough of women. There'll be no more petticoats to rule Russia. And there'll be a law. A law excluding all women from succession to the throne. Well, what do you want? Go on, get out of here. We're busy doing men's work. And we don't want any more interference from women. Go on back to the Empress. She can have another day or two to put ideas into your head. And then I shall come. And you'll go to the kitchen where you belong. Now go on, get out! I came to tell you that the Empress is dead. Dead? Finished? 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 Long live the Emperor. Look, little Catherine. Look, see what I've done. Look, new coins, new uniforms for the army. All these people to come back from Siberia. All these people to go to Siberia. And then look here. Five new regiments to be formed on the western frontier. You are sending these people to Siberia? Yes. All of them. Mm. Why not have them executed? Well, why? They, 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 they've committed no crime. Mm. Then why send them to Siberia? Well, because, because, <laughs> because I'm the Tsar. Oh, I see. That's a very good reason. <laughs> and of course, you want to please the crowd in your ante room. You think that'll please them? Oh, they'll be delighted. We won't please the rabble. There was something. Something I, I, I wanted to... <clears throat> oh, of course, the war. Um, Gregory, Army Council for next Wednesday. Here's the first army with the Austrians under General Dahn. It's really a demonstration of force to pin down the main Prussian forces at this part. Meanwhile, General Myonsov strikes for Berlin. Is that your plan, Rumyansov? Does it meet with your approval, Your Majesty? Might. It might meet with my approval, Romyansov. But 
What about Ivan Ivanovich? Who? Ivan Ivanovich. Who is Ivan Ivanovich, Your Majesty? There you are, gentlemen. Who is Ivan Ivanovich? How can we expect to know what Ivan Ivanovich thinks if we don't even know who he is? You, Rubiansov, will be a field marshal. So will you, Chernikov, and Butelin, a count, and Penin, a governor. But, but what will happen to Ivan Ivanovich? And since we don't know what Ivan Ivanovich thinks, I suppose I shall have to find Ivan Ivanovich. Who is Ivan Ivanovich? What does he mean by Ivan Ivanovich? Sorry, gentlemen. I thought, where is the emperor? His Majesty left a moment ago. Has something happened? Anything wrong? Nothing in particular. What was it? His Majesty began to talk about the opinions of a certain Ivan Ivanovich. And when I asked who the man was, he answered that that was the question. Who was Ivan Ivanovich? Oh, but don't you understand? That is Ivan Ivanovich. That is Ivan Ivanovich. Ivan Ivanovich is Russia. The common soldier. Millions and millions of Russian peasants. Ivan Ivanovich wants to till his soil, fill his stomach, embrace his wife. And Johann Müller in Pomerania wants exactly the same. But they'll kill each other and rot in the brown Pomeranian soil while we play at politics and statesmanship and glory. Oh, it's easy to understand if one loves Russia. We all love Russia. And we understand you. Whom you answer. Why can't you understand him? Ah, here you are, Ivan Ivanovich. Tell me, what do you think of their ingenious plan for the war? Imperial Majesty, my name is not Ivan Ivanovich. Your cattle for slaughter, Ivan Ivanovich. Imperial Majesty, my name is not Ivan Ivanovich. My dog has more of a brain and more of an immortal soul than you, Ivan Ivanovich. Imperial Majesty, my name is Ivan Nikolaevich. No, gentlemen. Under the rule of the late Empress, Russia gained strength. After her, Russia needs a ruler, a man. And the Emperor will be a great ruler. If you all serve him loyally, if Russia gives him love and confidence. It is you whom Russia loves. You understand Russia, and Russia understands you. Every soldier in the army is ready to die if you call on him. Everyone thinks you could lead Russia wherever you like. Catherine. Oh, Peter. Forgive my intruding. I just came. To talk over your future with these loyal gentlemen. Oh, no. I came because I want... Get out of here. Get to the kitchen. To the nursery. Get out! Now stay here. Peter. For these loyal leaders of the army. Peter. And give your orders. Peter. Get into my chair. You're already in my shoes. Captain Orloff, carry on with the council. And let me know what the lady has decided. I was waiting for dear Catherine. Uh, 
every soul in Russia pleads with you, begs you, urges you. And one day your soul will respond to never, it. Never, never, never. Waiting for that day, hundreds of us stake our heads day after day to win over officer after officer, man after man, with the words, Catherine and Russia. What do you want to make me, a traitor to my husband? And the Empress of Russia. The Empress of Russia? The Empress of Russia? No. No, Olaf. I love the Emperor, and I don't want to be anything but his wife. Her Majesty, I deeply regret that... What is it, Godovich? His Majesty's order is... is... What is His Majesty's order? That for the future, Your Majesty will occupy the French apartment in the right wing. Do you mean I am not to live here any longer? His Majesty's orders. I want to see His Majesty. Oh, His Majesty's orders. But all my things are in there. May and I fetch a few books and little things for myself? His Majesty has commanded that nothing shall be touched until further orders. It was um, a French apartment, wasn't it? Thank you, Gudovich. deeply regrets he cannot come tonight. How very unfortunate. You will please go and tell Her Majesty that her presence here is indispensable to my happiness. And if you come back without her, I'll send you on another errand. You quite understand. And to you, Sir Charles, as ambassador of England, and you, Vicomte, as ambassador of France, I tender my sincere apologies for Her Majesty not being here to receive you. Some slight indisposition, perhaps. Or a refractory frock. After all, Her Majesty is a woman. <laughs> You're quite right, Vicomte. That's a woman all over. Too ill to come, but not too ill to dress if she has to come. <laughs> Her Majesty. Well? Forgive me, but I'm afraid you must come. I won't. But... You, you should have seen him. I've told you I'm not going to be humiliated. Is that clear enough? I understand, Your Majesty. And I know you're right. Only... Only what? It means... Siberia for me. Did he say so? Yes, Your Majesty, if I go back without you. I'm coming. Don't get up, gentlemen. Please, keep your seats. Don't look so unhappy, Gudovich. A woman can sit at the end of the table and still be the head of it. And another can sit at the head of the table and be the last of all women. 
Oh, did you hear what she said? Godovich, why hasn't Countess Vorenzov got the Order of St. Catherine? The Order of St. Catherine is given only to members of the Imperial family, Your Majesty. She'll be a member of the Imperial family very soon. Won't you, my darling? <coughs> Get the Order and the Star for Countess Vorenzov. I will convey Your Majesty's command tomorrow to the office of the Order. You see, Sir Charles, Russia. Would such sluggishness be possible in England? Am I wrong? Or is that the order of St. Catherine? Her Majesty's order. Her Majesty's order. Bring it to me. I'm waiting, Gudovich. Say something to make me laugh. I'll tell you the funniest story you've ever heard. Captain Presek has been arrested. If we lose one more day, we lose our heads. Hmm. Now, gentlemen, let us drink to the First Lady of the Empire. I ask your majesty's permission to retire. I don't feel very well. You're not feeling well either, Vicomte? I do not feel very well either, your majesty. Anyone else not feeling well? Nerishkin! If you happen to have been plotting against the Tsar, perhaps you have had an uneasy feeling around the neck that stopped you from enjoying your food. Perhaps you'd like to retire too. Origin! A lump in the throat. A pressure on the neck. You may go. And every traitor and conspirator at this table can go. All of you clear the house! Only the two of us, little Catherine. <laughs> Just an intimate little dinner. Just like old times, huh? This is six months ago. What was it six hundred years ago?
Don't be afraid, little Catherine. You love me, don't you? You haven't plotted against me, have you? You wouldn't betray me, would you? Poor little Catherine. You should be sent to a nunnery. And her pretty little head will be all shaved. And they'll put her in a small stony cell. No laughter. No sunshine. No kisses. Just bread. And water. And prayers. Or curses. For as long as she lives. Time has come for you to give the word. We can't wait another minute. Can a man love a woman like me for love? We can't wait another minute. We have to fight or die. Can a man love a woman like me for love? From the first moment I saw you, I loved you. Didn't you know that? Thank you, Olaf. Now we have no time to lose. Tell me your plans. Here are the barracks of the Smileski Regiment, ours. There's the Holstein Regiment. It has not yet been won over. Our first aim, therefore, should be to talk to them. We talk to nobody. If the Ismailovsky regiment is ours, we have a weapon in our hand. If the Holstein regiment refuses to come with us, we'll fight them. Yes, Your Majesty. I'll go at once and report as soon as I can. Oh, I'm coming with you. Yes, Your Majesty. What's this cross? There will be a group of absolutely faithful officers. They will cover your escape if we fail. Fail? Better not think of that. Better send these officers at once to reinforce the palace guard. Yes, Your Majesty. And it will be their duty to arrest the Tsar at dawn. To arrest the Tsar? Naturally. What will happen to him? What will happen to him? Not a hair of his head must be touched. He must be rendered harmless, Your Majesty. I know. He must be arrested and taken to a safe place where he can be watched. Later, we can send him to Sweden, Germany, wherever he wants to go. That is Your Majesty's wish? It is my command, Olaf. Perhaps I was wrong to give her one night more. I'll go and take the little neck, and then the lady won't be dangerous anymore. Peter. Peter, you're always thinking of her. What, what was it I, I wanted? To kill her. 
Captain Talitin, your orders are to arrest the Empress of Dawn and send her under strong escort to the nunnery of Saint Elizabeth. You're under arrest. Take him away. Look! like this with my father, meet the stars. He told me each one of us has a planet of his own. I wonder which is mine. You are my prisoner, sir. Prisoner? Whose service are you in? In the service of Her Majesty, Catherine the Second, Empress of Russia. Peter! Oh, he won't have gone me! Have you never wished to have wings? Death must be something like this. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly you have wings. Her Majesty's order is you leave the palace under escort for the manor house of Ropshire.
Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. Well, here we are, my friends. Oh, Theodore. Have the goodness to get into the carriage, sir. And if I don't want to get into the carriage, what then? Don't compel us to use force, sir. But I do compel you to use force. Go on. Oh, don't be afraid, gentlemen. The Emperor is lenient. And he's very tired. And very glad to go on this journey. The carriage, sir. Oh, yes, the carriage. You'll come with me, won't you, Fyodor? You'll make sure that I reach the, the end of the journey as quickly as possible. Because I am rather tired. There's a rumor spreading your majesty has been killed. Open the windows. I'll show myself to them. You must tell her. This is the happiest day of my life. And I always believed nobody cared for me. Suddenly, I'm loved. I'm loved by so many. Oh, I must try hard not to cry. Who will work tomorrow, gentlemen? Happiness has made me tired. I need a little rest. Goodbye, goodbye, Talitin. I know what I owe you. Goodbye. Baryatinsky. I'll show you how grateful I can be. Goodbye, dear. Dear. One part of my life belongs to you. I won't forget it. Kiss me. What has happened? Jealous? So soon? What is it? 
Your Majesty, the Tsar. I swear to you, I knew nothing about it. Who killed him? Who was it? Who killed him? victory. Who made me a murderess? I told you not to touch a hair of his head. I ordered it. I commanded it. Your Majesty. Yes. I want to know who it was. I'll punish all of you if you don't show me the one. Get out. Get out of here! I don't want to see any of you again! Everything has its price, Your Majesty. And the crown has the highest price of all. I didn't want it at that price. Russia wanted you at any price. He always called me little Catherine. 